Hi everybody, Dave Calhoun here in the Standard TV and Appliance Kitchen with Patrick McKee. Patrick is the executive chef from Perlo Restaurant, right. and we are cooking some delicious stuff. So you want to talk about what we're going to make today? Absolutely. So what we have is some uh, Oregon elk. These are the hind shanks. I think that uh, for the, it's hunting season, I think, right now. So what I wanted to do was to bring today a cut I think that might be a little bit overlooked as far as uh, some of the butchery that happens when you get your animal. And uh, opposed to the front shakes and the hind shakes, I think this stuff may end up being stew meat. So what I've done is I uh, had them cut about like so, so that uh, we can take them and we're gonna cook them for a real long, slow period of time. A uh, little bit of red wine and a little bit of beef broth. But first what I like to do is just to take these and just you season with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I know everybody out there likes doing stuff and everybody has their own kind of special spice rub that they like uh -huh. to do. So I like to kind of think of different things that I like to use in my spice rub. So I've got some chilies that I actually toasted on a grill at home some ancho chili, so it's a Mexican chili. Uh, dried, I used a little bit of black pepper, and then I used a little bit of uh, regular paprika and some cumin. Just toasted everything together in a pan. Very simple, and then I just used a, uh, my coffee grinder, actually, okay. and just ground, made sure it was nice and clean, and then just ground everything together. And then I came out with a really nice kind of toasty and kind of spicy mix. So kind of like a dry rub. It's a dry rub this. that we're gonna put on here, exactly. Okay. And do you let these sit in the fridge for any period of time before you, you cook you, them? You or? certainly can. You can smell the cumin really coming off. Oh yeah, it's very spicy. So, and well, then... And you know, one thing is, I'm guilty as the next guy of just taking all the meat that's not either backstrap or, or the rib or something that's really good and just turning that into either sausage, pepperoni, and that type of thing. And this is something that, take a piece of meat that may be overlooked and really prepare something special. I, I totally agree with you, and I also think that uh, you know taking parts of your animal to your butcher and having them do this, because this is going to require a saw to get through the bone here, but it's something that's really easy to do. And then, uh, you know, depending on the size of your animal, you've got a couple of cuts. You can feed your family with it. You could have a little uh, dinner party at home. So Okay, so once you've seasoned it and then either let it sit in the, or just go right to the oven, what are you doing next? Okay, I'm going to take a pot like this. I'm going to get a little bit of oil, and all we do is just real simple. We're just going to sear both sides of it. And then after it's done searing, I add some carrot and onion to the mix as well, and then uh, saute that. And then I just add red wine and beef stock. So it depends on how much red wine you like to use. I tend to prefer to uh, have all my braising have a little, a little more red wine than I think some people would like, but that's just me. And then veal stock, bring it up to a boil. You can put it in your oven. Uh, I went real low, 300 degrees, and I cooked it for almost three hours. Okay. In the pot, three in the hours, pot. Yeah. and then, okay, so now that that's cooked, and is it the consistency, is it coming off the bone at this point? It's or? going to be falling off the bone, and I think if I pull this up, you can kind of see what's going on here. See how that's just... Oh, like, yeah, that looks really wonderful. So, once it hits that, and it becomes fork tender, so what I like to do, honestly, is I've just got one of these. It's just mm -hmm. a little fork, and just go through, and you can just kind of feel how tender this really is. If your fork comes out nice and clean like that, you know, you're good to go. Yeah, it's similar so. to like what we do with our pot roast if we were cooking Exactly, yeah. same, same exact method. Okay. So just, uh, you know, the elk is real lean, uh, so any kind of extra fat that you can add to this is really great. So the stock that I made was actually from veal bones that I got from my butcher. So like any kind of like a, a real gelatinous, uh, like soup bone and things like that that you can get that are gonna impart a lot of flavor and a lot of fat in here is really gonna help this out because again, that elk is real lean. Yeah, and that's something that when we talk about either venison or, or elk, and those don't have a lot of fat like we're used to with cooking cattle right. and stuff. And so you have to really be careful either not to overcook it, right. but to try and add some fat because it will dry out really fast. It sure will. You can definitely overcook this stuff. Uh, you'd think that cooking something for such a long period of time was not possible. You know, it'd be falling apart and it'd be great. But a lot of times what can happen is you can cook it too long and then it'll just seize back up and then it'll just be super tough. Okay, excellent. So now what's our next step? Okay, well, so what I did was I made some polenta. So I went to kind of my Italian roots, my mom's Italian. Uh, this reminds me of uh, like a Sunday stew that she would do. So we always had like some kind of a soft polenta that she would make. Uh, the braising meat as well, and then uh, that was really about it. It was just kind of our main course for, for dinner that night. So what I did was I had uh, one cup of polenta, and then there's a ratio that I like to use for polenta. Uh, traditionally, some people use like vegetable stock, a lot of people use just water, which is fine. But what I like to do is to break it up half and half between milk and water. So uh, 
For a good creamy polenta, I like to go five, like a ratio of five and, to one. And what all's in the polenta? So basically all I did was I sauteed a little bit of onion. It's just cornmeal. Okay. Right? So uh, one cup of polenta and then, so five cups of liquid and I just broke it up half, two and a half cups of milk, two and a half cups of uh, water and then just uh, brought it up to a boil and then stirred in my polenta and just let it let it uh, uh, cook away. So always stir your polenta. It's like stirring your grits. You always hear somebody say when you're walking through the kitchen, stir the grits. So this is the same principle here. So it's just, you're going through, you can see it's already thickened up real nice. So you can see here. Yeah, that looks great. So. And then uh, for a traditional Italian family. <laughs> Is that just regular butter? Or just regular, just regular, regular, regular butter? butter this time. All you gotta do is just add a little bit of butter and then a little bit of Parmesan and then we'll stir that together. All right, so we melted our butter and we're ready to plate up. Got the cheese in here and everything. This is a great wintertime dish. It's nice when it's cold outside. See this guy's just really. Yeah, I love when you can see the bone there just kind of falling off like that. Wow. And then, you know, your last piece here. It's just a... Now let's just pause and look at how beautiful that is. <laughs> Turned out all right, no? Got a yeah. little bit of uh, Oregon olive oil here. That is amazing. And then, you gotta have more cheese. <laughs> More cheese. Right. I see okay. a common, uh, <laughs> see a common, common a pattern there. In there. <laughs> Some fat going on in there. Okay, well, I am going to yeah, test this here. Way. That's delicious, my friend. Good, good. If you guys are interested in the recipe and how we made this, go to our website. Also, you can always check them out at Perlow Restaurant. I'd like to thank Standard TV and Appliance for letting us invade their kitchen. We'll see you guys later.